Hi YouTube, welcome to another video. And this one's gonna be slightly different. It's gonna be taking a look at the new smartphone I've just received. I've actually got a Samsung S20 Ultra now. I've been using the S9 Plus for the last two years to do all my video on, all my vlogging on, um, and just as a general phone and camera. I did a video on that when I first got it, comparing that phone to a proper camera, comparing it to a few other phone cameras. I'm gonna be doing the same today. I'm gonna to do this one slightly different, rather than going out to take pictures of things that I think are gonna um, kind of really um, challenge the cameras. I've just come to two places I really like, to be honest. Um, the Bluebells are out now, it's around about May, and I've come to Emsworthy Common. It's somewhere that you get a lot of nice uh, bluebells. They're quite late. They're about a month after the ones you kind of get in the, um, the woodlands. Um, but it's a really nice composition. It's somewhere I've shot loads over the years with a proper camera. Um, so I'm gonna get in a few shots here now. I'm gonna be comparing this to my proper Canon 6D um, full frame camera, which is a professional or entry level professional camera. Um, gonna be looking at the results, see how good this camera on this phone can actually be when we really, really compare it to an almost professional camera. And just a few other smartphones. Um, I've got a few of me, I've got a really old Nokia. If I can get that to work, I will uh, be comparing it. But I have a feeling that it's uh, a bit knackered. Uh, I'll give it a try anyway. Um, and once I've done this location, I'll be going to somewhere that I also really like shooting, which is um, just up here. You probably can't see because I've got this on live focus video at the moment. Um, and I'm also taking this picture at the back of the camera. Something I don't normally do on the S9, I've always used the front facing camera, but um, on the back of the S20, we've got some nice wide angle lenses we, we can put to use. Now the live focus does uh, crop in quite a lot, but I'm hopefully it's gonna get a nice image and it's gonna be showing off now what kind of effect you can get with this video. Um, but yeah, once I've done here, I'm gonna be getting up to how well lawn to take another picture. It's slightly different composition, um, less kind of foreground interest up there, but something just to compare the two images so you can see. It's kind of midday sun at the moment, so it's harsh conditions. It's something which are always gonna make cameras struggle. So it's gonna be a good comparison. Uh, I'm gonna stop rabbiting on now. I'm gonna switch over to my S9 to vlog this so you can see me showing off this camera a bit and going through some of the settings on it and stuff like that. It's not really gonna be an in-depth look at the UI of the phone and what the phone could do. It's just literally gonna be how good are the images this camera produces or this smartphone produces. Can they ever compete with a um, proper camera? So it's gonna be focused on that. I'll get set up now, um, get the composition ready on all the cameras and I'll catch up with you in a few minutes time. Hi guys, I'm back in the office now, as you can probably tell, I'm not actually at the location anymore. I did actually do some video in um, Upper Emsworthy Common there and up at Harwell Lawn, which are the locations you're gonna see in, um, me take the pictures of. Um, but I came to the realization that it's just gonna blow out the video too long. It's gonna be too long and too kind of difficult to watch. So I've decided to come straight into the office, straight into looking at the files. And I'll be just using a bit of that footage from up there, just as a bit of B-roll, a bit of kind of um, information as you can see while shooting, see what I was doing at the time, just add a bit to it. Um, now, yeah, got some really nice images up there using obviously the Samsung. I also used my um, Samsung S9 to take some pictures. Um, the Canon 60, which is this camera here, which is a kind of semi-professional entry level um, DSLR full frame camera. So it's a very good good camera to compare it to um, with a pretty good lens on it, to be honest. Um, later on, you'll be seeing me look at some zoom shots. With that, I was using quite a big um, telephoto lens on this camera. So it is gonna be very hard for the, um, the phone to, to try and keep up with that. Um, gonna jump straight into um, Lightroom now. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna be looking at really is um, a shot that I did on the way down there. Now, the talking about the telephoto, the zoom lens, the um, space zoom as Sam can call it, I believe it's a fixed um, zoom, about around about four or five um, time zoom lens on there. Um, my honest opinion of it is it's okay if you use it within a certain zoom range. Anything up to 10 times is pretty good. Anything around five, six is very good and very usable. Um, now that's not a massive zoom range, but when you compare it to the ones that most smartphones have these days, like a two time zoom, um, you're getting a four, five, six time zoom 
very good quality. Um, up to 10 is usable. Up to 20 is probably shareable on Facebook and social media, um, but they're not the best quality images at that point. Anything below 50 is just a bit of a joke. Now they have done a few updates on the software. Samsung have done quite a few. They've really been pushing out the updates on this to try and improve it. Has got better, granted, but it still does have its uh, limitations. So, and for the those of you that say, do you really need a zoom lens that much on a camera phone? I probably agree with you, say you probably don't, but it does allow you to get shots that you potentially wouldn't do. Um, I'm just going to show you two images now that sum that up um, perfectly because on the way down to Emsworthy I came across a, a sheep still on a wall um, and it's something that if I got anything anywhere closer to the sheep it just would have ran off they're quite shy the sheep they don't like people going up to them um, and it meant I wouldn't have been able to get the image now granted it's not photographically the best image um, in the world but it's something that I couldn't have got um, if I didn't have that zoom lens um, on the phone anyway. So I'm just going to fire up the screen recording software now. Um, audio and Lightroom, I'm going straight into those images. So if I open up this one now, um, this is taken with the 108 megapixel um, one time main camera on the Samsung. Um, it's basically just a tree with the wall and uh, a sheep here on, in the background. And the sheep, granted, is not even facing me. Um, but if we zoom into that level, and uh, it's quite far zoomed in, we can see we've got very little detail um, in any of the um, the rocks and the trees. And this is a 108 megapixel image, so it's a big file. If I zoom in even more, we will see that there is literally no detail in that at all anymore. It's absolutely horrendous. It's over sharpened. It's blotchy. Um, but we are zooming in very far here, so we are doing something which you wouldn't normally do. If we just zoom in once on that file, we can see that it's kind of usable, but not the best quality. Now, if I go to the zoom lens, we can see that the zoom lens actually starts here. So we're already zoomed in quite high. Now, this is probably shooting something around about uh, 20 times, something like that, maybe 30, 20 to 30. And the detail on it is not bad. Um, we can see we've got detail in the bluebells, um, detail in the rocks, although it's a bit kind of um, Picasso style. Um, bluebells aren't particularly sharp, they're overexposed and the sheep's face isn't sharp. Um, but still, the difference comparing that to that is massive. I do actually have a bit further along some images here which um, shooting more about say a 20 times zoom, we do actually have a bit more sharpness on the sheep's face. Um, and overall the image is um, a lot better. Um, you can see we have detail in the rocks and the bluebells here and uh, the tree. So just summing that image up alone, it just shows that um, you can actually get some okay uh, images by using the zoom lens. And the difference between this one on the left and the one on the right is massive. You can barely even see um, the one on the right. Now looking at the shots, looking at 108 megapixel images, you can roughly zoom to about times three on those, um, or times four roughly, until you start getting about the same quality as the telephoto zoom lens, anywhere from four times to 20 times really, the zoom lens wins hands down, a lot, lot better quality. Right, next thing we're gonna be looking at the um, main shots and I've got one here and one here all we set up um, we're going to compare them now so the one on the left is the Samsung S20 Ultra and the one on the right is the Canon now you can see here that on the Samsung the sky is a lot better exposed um, I've not done any comparison shots with the Samsung shooting in raw format there is just no need to um, shooting images like this during the day and most phone cameras now are pretty damn good when it comes to um, dy dynamic range they get the the skies exposed well the foreground exposed well overall the image is quite nice the colors are definitely more natural as well on this um, Samsung shot whereas the Canon um, the white balance is slightly out if you look at the bluebells they tend to look a bit more purple um, on the Sam on the, the Canon here sorry uh, the Bluebells in the Samsung are bluer. They're more of a natural scene. So the, the Samsung wins really here for dynamic range um, and also 
um, color accuracy and stuff like that. If we look at the Canon, um, this was a raw file. So I have edited these ever so slightly, but I've kept the editing to minimum. None of these files are sharpened. None of them had any noise reduction. All I've done to them is slightly reduce the height and slightly increase the shadows. Because it's a raw file, um, they come very flat and bland and you've got to increase them slightly to get to how um, it would save as a JPEG. The Samsung saved as a JPEG, so it's already had all this auto correction done by the camera. All the only difference is I've manually done it. But still, the Samsung has done a better job at um, reserving the detail in that sky there. Um, now I'm just going to um, zoom in on these um, and just have a look at them. Uh, I'm not an expert at using um, Lightroom to be honest. Uh, we can see that if we do it this way, if we zoom in on the, uh, this one's the Canon, to that rock. Uh, we can see it's a bit of soft, a bit soft, not too bad though. Um, we're a bit more zoomed in here. The zoom on these is slightly different, sorry. Um, but we can see the uh, the Samsung does a really, really, really good job at maintaining the details um, in that um, in the rocks there. Um, granted, we're zooming in slightly more on the Canon, and it's a smaller file size. It's only a 21 megapixel or 20 megapixel file compared to 108. Um, so it's never really going to be a fair test, but it does just show um, that the the detail in this shot um, in the Samsung is absolutely amazing. It's so sharp. It's ever so slightly over sharpened, I'd say. The Samsung's been doing some sharpening and some editing on the file, and the result is some pretty unnatural um, effects on it. Um, but overall, for a phone, I mean, that is an amazing, amazing image. Sharp throughout. Um, good detail. We can come right across the back. We can even see the caravan in the back there, um, up on the hill. So, yeah, very, very good quality. If we try and look at that, uh, if we can even see it, I think the, it might not be in the picture. There it is. We can see it's a lot worse quality in the Canon. Um, we're not zoomed in as much yet yeah, it's blurry um, again this file has probably been edited less because the Samsung does a lot of editing in the phone this is more of a natural image um, but it does just show apart from the difference in color accuracy and things like that the sharpness in the Samsung is actually really really good so I'd probably say this is a hand down win for um, the Samsung now in all reality when it comes to um, editing files or setting up shots with proper cameras. We don't tend to rely on the software and the camera or editing 100% to get the exposure right. We use something here which is called a graduated filter. Uh, it's a bit like a set of sunglasses for your camera. It darkens the sky um, and it kind of balances the, the scene out. So we don't really have to rely on software really and 100% on that when we're doing proper photography of a proper camera. So it's not the end of the world, but generally speaking, this just shows um, how good that uh, shot is. Um, I'm going to be looking at some zoom shots now and comparing um, the two, uh, the zoom camera again. So I'll just set that up. Right, now this is Hator Rock. Um, you can see in the distance here, this is shot at 7mm, which is the main camera on the Samsung, and it's a 108 megapixel shot this is. Um, we can zoom in quite far uh, when it eventually loads, and we should be able to see that there's quite good detail on it. It's not too bad. Uh, we can see the person stood on the top of the rock. There's always people on Haytor. Um, a few ponies over here, a few more ponies down here. For the zoom level that is at, that's a very good sharp image. Um, and we're going to be going on to this one here, which is the same. And now this one here is shot with my Samsung S9. So if we zoom into the same level, we can see it's pretty good actually um, at that level. We're just going to compare these two in a minute. Um, but we can see we're zoomed in more on the um, the one on the left, which is the S9, and it's got less artificial sharpening. The S the S9, sorry, here on the right, 
looks very, very over sharpened. Um, Samson are really trying to get the detail in this shot, but they've killed it by over sharpening it. The S20 on the left is more natural. Um, zooming in again, we can see we lose detail in this one, but it's zoomed in a lot more. Um, this one is just very, very over sharpened. Um, if we go to So this one here is the S20 um, and this one here is the S9. So the S20 definitely looks more natural. It's also reserved more detail in that sky. Done a better job at resolving detail in the image. This one's overwashed, washed out, blown out and the color accuracy is a bit out. The white balance is wrong. And we can see that the uh, image doesn't hold up very well at all when you zoom in like you'd expect. Um, this one fares a lot better when you zoom in um, like you'd expect really um, nothing really amazing amazingly over the top there now we're going to look at the uh, the zoom so this is a hundred times zoom and it looks like something picasso would um create uh horrendously unusable um we're starting to get i think this is around about 80 something like that still unusable this is around about 50. Um, I mean, you could take a picture of something you're semi-interested in and share it to um, Facebook or something. But if we zoom in, we can see that there is no detail in that at all. Um, not a very good image at all. When you start coming back to uh, this level here, which is around about 30 or 20, this is around about, sorry. You can see we do actually get some nice usable images. Um, you can see the guy stood on the rock there quite well. And if you compare that guy to the 108 megapixel image, you'll see, and it eventually loads. You can see that the detail in that person, even though there's two of them now, it's just not there. It's just not there at all. Even at 108 megapixel, you just can't bring up the detail you can um, in the person with the telephoto zoom lens on it. So it does actually have its its use as a telephoto lens. Um, and then when you zoom out a bit more to somewhere around about f, uh, sorry, about 10 times, um, you do actually get some nice usable images there. You can even see the the colour of the person's top there and the fact they've got jeans on. So yeah, good good uh, good quality you can use the zoom lens it does have its um, benefits um, just going to compare one of those to this one here which is roughly the same zoom to the Canon so the one on the right here is the Canon. Again, it's had no uh, color correction in it. It's had very, well, no sharpening at all um, and very little effects in it. The white balance is slightly out on it. Again, the, the Samsung's got the better white balance. Um, so this is, like I say, around about 10 times zoom, uh, 10 times to say um, 15 times, something like that. Um, Whereas the Canon is around about the same. same, same zoom. It's just the Canon is all optical, whereas the Samsung is mainly digital zoom. So if we go at the, the uh, Canon, you can see the difference in detail uh, is amazing. You can see that we can really see the detail in this person. We can really see the detail in the rock. Um, really, really good quality image. Um, I mean, the difference is here, you're comparing a £600, £700 lens to uh, a phone camera, so it's not really a fair comparison. But it's just to show you that, really, how um, how well the uh, the Samsung's done, if anything, for what it is. You know, you can definitely see the detail in that person on the, on the Samsung. Um, you can see the detail in the person in the Canon, it's just the Canon's slightly more zoomed in, so... Um, probably a overall win again for the Samsung considering it's a phone. Right now these are some shots taken up at the lawn now, Harwell Lawn. Um, this really really cool uh, kind of lawn here with the trees growing out the top of them. Um, 
and I think I've already tagged some of these. Right, so we're going to compare these because this is the uh, pixel binned 12 megapixel shot from the Samsung S20 compared to the 108 megapixel shot on the Samsung S20. Now we automatically know the one on the right here is the 108 megapixel one because it's taken ages to load. Um, but we're just going to compare them. Now again the zoom is out here because um, because they're different file sizes. This one is the 12 megapixel. You can see it's starting to lose the quality on the rocks here a bit. It's uh, starting to pixelate on the edges. Uh, the tree's a bit wish-washy. Um, and at the similar zoom, the 108 megapixel is a lot better. We can see we got some funky stuff going on the rocks here. Again, Samsung sharpening is kind of killing the image. Um, but the tree looks better. Detail in the background looks a lot better. We can see these tools and this pile of rocks here quite well. Um, whereas on this one, they're a bit more blurry. So yeah, still both really good images, but that just compares the two. Um, like you'd expect, the 108 megapixel image is exactly the same. It just has more resolution um, and similar sharpening. You could potentially try and get around this sharpening issue by shooting in RAW. Samsung might not do so much automatic sharpening, but then um, you'd have to do the test. It's one test unfortunately I haven't done. This one here is the S9. And we'll compare that to a 12 megapixel shot from the S20. So we're looking at similar zoom here. Now the one on the left is the F20. Um, you can see there's more detail in the sky again. It's washed out on the S9. We zoom in. We can see the S20 has a bit more detail on that rock. Um, not too bad. More detail in the tree and less noise and artifacts on the ground. Now the one on the right again is the Canon. Um, it looks different color balance again uh, compared to the Samsung which has got a really good color, color accuracy. Waiting for that to load. that to the Canon. Now this is where you can see the difference between the Samsung. The Samsung is doing a lot, a lot of unnatural sharpening. You look at the rocks in the Samsung, they look very uh, Picasso-like, a lot of weird kind of patterns in them. We can compare that to the Canon, we'll see that although softer, the rocks are a lot more natural um, and what that means is we can sharpen that when we're editing files and bring it up to something that's sharp um, and usable. We can't do that with the, can uh, the Samsung because we're just going to sharpen this mess. Um, it's got to be expected the, the image sensor in the Samsung is probably about a uh, fifth of the size of the one in the, Sam in the Canon so um, it's never going to be able to compete properly when it comes to really nitpicking. Um, so I'd say the Canon wins this one because we can do more of the file. Right, now the last image I want to look at is just one that I took uh, the other day, which is uh, one of my mum's German Shepherd uh, dog. And it's just to show the really nice effect you can get on the Samsung, the S20 Ultra. This is shot with the um, the main um, the main camera, and I believe this is on live view or live focus. So it's all the effects in this are being done by um, the phone. But we can see we've got really nice load of sharpness. 
um, on the dog here um, and just a really nice um, kind of background blur looking out to um, the stables and the trees in the background so you can get some really cool images on the, the live focus on this um, this is another one I took on Dartmoor the other day um, just as I was driving past there's a um, Highland cattle up there we look at the sharpness on this looks really good um, again we're starting to get some crazy effects through the Samson image software there but generally speaking that's a really good image so yeah um, I'll probably leave it at that to be honest I won't go on any more um, my overall thoughts on the camera on the S20 Ultra very very good the wide angle lens um, is very nice I will just put a comparison up so you can see the difference between the wide angle and the normal one um, very wide and it does have some really nice quality images on that wide angle lens as well it's not just wide angle with distortion very well corrected and also all the image quality is good as well you get good dynamic range good sharpness the 108 megapixel um, camera or the lens um, yes amazing 108 megapixel isn't going to be for everyone uh, quite by big files if you know you're going to do a lot of editing with those files um, that resolution does help that being said samsung do a really good job at converting that 108 megapixel down to 12 megapixel so if you want to take slightly smaller image file sizes um, smaller resolution but get that detail um, that does work very well um, telephoto zoom lens it's okay but it's got its limitations obviously you can't go too far in with it um, overall that's about it really really nice set of um, options on this camera nice live focus video as well which gets this cool kind of background blur on this you can see now there's probably been a very long video so i apologize in advance um hope you enjoy the videos coming up after this that should just compare them um, but hope this has answered some of your questions i'd highly rate this as a smartphone camera when i did the review uh, a few years ago on my s9 versus my canon it was clear to show that although the s9 did quite well the Canon probably beat it on every single test. A couple of years later, um, with this new 108 megapixel image sensor in this this phone, it's not that that place anymore. Um, if you were to look at the images side by side, um, the Samson a lot of the time, to be honest, does start beating the Canon. It's only when you really zoom in and you see how the Samson is. Um, editing those files editing those tiny little bits of detail and kind of messing up a bit is when you realize that the, the canon does still win but overall if you were to take those images print them put them on your wall you wouldn't be able to tell the difference apart from the color accuracy between the samson and the canon hi guys and sorry about the dramatic cut i actually ran out of room on the camera um yeah i was just saying if you were to print both those images off you probably wouldn't be able to see too much detail in the prints especially if you're printing at smaller kind of prints not really kind of big big uh, image size or print size um like i was going to say although they're very similar in some of the image quality now between some of the new smartphones and the cameras um, a camera will always win for me. It allows you to slow down what you're doing. Um, it allows you to use different lenses, filters, various other things with them. It's more of a thought um, kind of process, more of a creative um, end result. And it just allows you to, rather than just getting a kind of camera phone out of your pocket and making it so easy and snap that picture, it allows you to get out and really slow down what you're doing. And that is what photography is all about for me really is getting out kind of slowing down what you're doing and trying to capture a beautiful scene um but saying that like i was saying they are really really starting to get close now i think some of these phones um i hope you've enjoyed the, watching this one it's been quite nice for me to do it and actually see how well it does work um if you have liked it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as always um i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll catch up with you on the next one mm -hmm.